Hi, my name is Ryan Campbell, and I'm going to teach you about the Havel-Hakimi theorem and graphic sequences. In our introduction, we will discuss the definitions of sequences and graphic sequences, and we will do a few graphic sequence examples, and then we will get into the Havel-Hakimi theorem, which as an if and only if theorem, we will have to prove sufficiency and necessity. Our driving question is, can we draw a graph by removing the vertex of maximum degree from these two sequences? From sequence F, the vertex of maximum degree has degree 6, and in sequence H, the maximum degree is 7. So we want to know if we remove those two vertices, can we draw graphs? Our definition of degree sequence is a list of vertex degrees, which we usually write in non-increasing order. So that means that D1 has the maximum degree, and then D2 is the degree that is equal to or less than D1. And that pattern continues all the way through our nth term, um, which is Dn, and it has the minimum degree of all of the vertices in our graph. Um, proposition 1328 states that the non-negative integers in that degree sequence are the vertex of degrees of a graph if and only if their sum is even. Now we know from the degree sum theorem that the number of vertices equals 2 times the number of edges. And if the number of edges has to be a whole number, that means n has to be divisible by 2, which means that n is even. So it does not make any sense for a graph to exist where the sum of degrees is odd. For a graphic sequence, it is a list of non-negative numbers that is the degree sequence of a simple graph. So it has to follow all of the rules of a degree sequence. A simple graph with degree sequence D realizes D. Now realizes means that if we have a simple graph that has that degree sequence, it just means that it actually shows up. Okay? So when we ask ourselves, is D realizable? That just means, can we draw a simple graph with that degree sequence? So here are some graphic sequence examples. We've got sequence F back from our driving question. The sum of those degrees is 23. And we know that we cannot have an odd sum. So by proposition 1328, F cannot be realized. So we cannot draw a graph that has this degree sequence. Sequence H, also from the driving question, has a sum of 28. And by that proposition, H can be realized. So we can draw a graph with that degree sequence. But that's not what the question was asking. It said if we remove that vertex with the largest degree, will we be able to draw a graph then? We are going to answer that after we prove the Havel-Hakimi theorem. We have a second graphic sequence example, and it talks about the recursive condition that, um, that we get when we add and remove vertices. So let's see graph K2 plus K1. We've got 1, 1, and 0 as the degree sequence. Then we are going to add in vertex W in the upper right-hand corner. As we add in vertex W, we are going to choose to make it adjacent to vertices of degrees 1 and 0. So that changes the upper right, no, upper left and lower right hand vertices from 1 and 0 to 2 and 1. So this new graph realizes the sequence 2, 2, 1, 1. But now what would happen if we take that vertex W away? Well, if we cut that vertex, we delete any edges that are adjacent to it. So deleting W returns us back to that same graph that we had up above, which is the sequence 1, 1, 0, 0. Now that we've gone through some definitions and examples, let's dive into the Havel-Hakimi theorem. The Havel-Hakimi theorem states that for a number of vertices that is greater than 1, an integer list D of size N is graphic if and only if D prime is graphic. And we get D prime 
from D by deleting D's largest element delta and subtracting one from its delta next largest elements. We also state here that the only one element graphic sequence is D1 equals zero. For the sufficiency portion of this proof, we want to show that if D prime is graphic through that whole process where we obtain D prime, then an integer list D of size n is graphic. So if D is graphic, if D prime is graphic, then D is graphic. For n equals one, the statement is trivial. We know that if n equals one, we only have one vertex. So it's not possible to have any edges, so its degree sequence must just be zero. Okay. So we are given D, a degree sequence, and we are given a simple graph G prime with degree sequence D prime. We're going to add in W adjacent two vertices with degrees D2 minus one, D3 minus one, D4 minus one, all the way through D delta plus one minus one. As we add in W, we are adding in edges. So the degrees of these vertices that we just talked about will increase by one. So those degrees will become D2 all the way through D delta plus one. And that will make our degree sequence D. So we will have delta as the first degree because that's from W. We'll have D2 all the way through D delta plus one. And then those degrees that were not um, affected by W whatsoever will remain the same. And that will be D. So D must be graphic. Here we get a sufficiency example. So we've got D, which equals four, three, 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 two, two, one. Since four is the largest degree, we have delta equals four. So that means the next four largest degrees in this sequence, we are going to subtract one from them. So that would be the three, 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 two, and those degrees will decrease by one, and we get two, 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 one. So that leaves us with degree sequence D prime, which will be two, 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 one, one. Here's a graph, let's call it G prime, that shows us D prime. So it realizes D prime. Now we're going to add in a vertex W and it is going to be adjacent to vertices with degrees two, 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 and one, which were D two minus one all the way through D delta plus one minus one, okay, from that list up above on the page. Okay. As we add in W though, we are adding in those edges, so the degrees of each of those vertices are going to increase by one. And here we see that on the right, those vertices have increased in degree. We now have W, which has our delta of four, and that um, vertex with degree one and vertex with degree two down there at the bottom have not changed whatsoever. So this new graph, G, realizes degree sequence D, since D can be realized, um, then it is graphic. Okay. For the necessity portion of the proof, we are saying that if the integer list D is graphic, then D prime is also graphic, and we are getting D prime in the same manner. So we begin with the simple graph G that realizes D, and we are going to produce G prime realizing D prime by of course taking W, removing it, and being left with um, our graph. Now S is going to be our set of all of the vertices um, with degree sequence D2 all the way through D delta plus one, and that means that the size of S has to be delta. If the neighborhood of W and S are the same thing, then we are going to delete W and obtain graph G prime. But we run into a problem because sometimes the neighborhood of W is not the same as the set S. 
If the neighborhood of W is not the same as the set S, that means we need to change the neighborhood of W and change S so that they become the same thing. And here's how you do it. If S and the neighborhood of W are not the same, that means we have to have at least one vertex, such as X, which is in S but is missing from the neighborhood of W. That also means, since they are the same size, that there has to be some vertex like Z that is not in S, but it is in the neighborhood of W. Okay. Since the degree of X is greater than or equal to the degree of Z, that means there has to be some extra vertex like Y in the vertex set of G so that Y and X are adjacent, but Y and Z are not adjacent. So we are going to take WZ and XY, those two edges, and we are just going to delete them. Then we are going to add in edges WX and YZ. So that makes W and X adjacent to each other, so X is in the neighborhood of S. Uh, I'm sorry, X is in the neighborhood of W, and it is also in set S. So we have just made the neighborhood of W and set S closer to being the exact same set. Now, of course, they might not still be the same set. We would just have to repeat this process for any other vertex such as V, which is an S but is missing from the neighborhood of W, and we repeat this process until they are identical sets. Okay. Eventually, we will convert graph G, what we started with, into G star, which is a graph where S and the neighborhood of W are the same. And then we can delete W from G star to obtain the desired G prime, which realizes D prime. Since we started off with a graph and we are just deleting some vertices and the edges that go along with them, D prime must be graphic. Now let's show an example of necessity case um, where the neighborhood of W and S are the same. So we get the degree sequence with um, the maximum degree four, and we have D prime equals two, one, 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 one. Okay, G is over here on the left. We've got vertex W up in the top left with degree four, and all of its uh, neighborhood is in red as well. So if we delete W, all of the vertices that are in the neighborhood of W will decrease by one, and we end up with G prime, which realizes D prime. When N of W is not equal to S, we run into that snag. Um, our graph G, we've got W and its neighborhood in red. Notice X is in, um, in the neighborhood, but if we d subtract one from the degree of X, we end up with zero. Now zero is not in D prime, so we know that X cannot be um, adjacent to W to get our G prime. So we are going to swap the adjacencies with vertex Z, which is up in that um, right hand corner, and it is in blue. Okay. Here in this graph, we are just um, showing the process of switching over those adjacencies. We are adding in the blue edges and removing the red edges. Okay. We end up with G star, where everything in the neighborhood of W is equal to S. So when we subtract, uh, remove out W, we subtract one from all of those red vertices degrees, and we end up with G prime, which realizes D prime. Finally, our conclusion. We wanted to know if we could draw a graph by removing the vertex of maximum degree from these sequences. And now we know that sequence F, we cannot do that because F cannot be realized. So that means that F prime could not be realized. But since H could be realized, H prime could be realized. So by the Havel-Hakimi theorem, we know that adding or removing a vertex W of maximum degree does not change whether the degree sequence can be realized.